Hey guys, how's it going? So, I've had some more questions recently on my Taurus G3. And I did a long video to start off with this gun and answered some of your questions, but I understand everyone doesn't have 40 minutes to watch a video. So, I'm going to answer a couple questions here and try to explain a few more details on this G3. Before I do that, hey guys, if you like my videos, don't forget to give them a thumbs up. Tell your friends about it. This way, more like-minded people can get together and enjoy guns and fight for the Second Amendment. And if you have a little extra coin and want to help out the channel, my Patreon link and subscribe star are down there in the description. So, like I said, had a few questions on this gun. And although I showed it in the first video and I showed you guys how the trigger safety works in the last video, I guess I forgot to show you guys the reset. So, just to get it out in the open, this has a great reset. I told you, this is a good trigger. So. I'm going to show you guys the reset on the trigger. So we're going to cock the pistol, put it in single action. Let's look at the trigger a little closer here. We're going to engage the trigger safety. So get that piece of polymer out of the way. There's some take up, not much effort. We hit a wall and then a rather crisp pull. Now the trigger pull isn't very hard on this gun. I'd say probably without a trigger gauge here. I'm going to put it in the five to six pound range, maybe five and a half. Again, sorry guys, I don't have a gauge, but I'm usually pretty close. So between five to six pounds, which is perfectly acceptable for a polymer striker fired pistol, in my opinion. So one more time, take up, we feel a wall, pretty darn crisp for what type of gun this is. It's not, you know, 1911, Chris, but hey, this isn't a 1911, so whatever, right? Okay, so I'm going to keep the trigger fully engaged. Reset by cycling the slide, and here's the reset. We're going to see if we can hear it right there. So you can see how close I am still to the back of the frame on the reset. Now I'm going to fire it again in single action. Same thing. Very nice, crisp, short pull. So... Very, very, very little movement before I hit reset, which is literally right there. And I'm ready to break the trigger again. So, and I would notice too, there's no over travel on this. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. There is an over travel stop. There's a little nub if you look at the very, very bottom of the trigger there. See that little nub sticking out? There you can see it. That's your over travel stop. So, if you're going ahead and, you know, pulling and you try to pull a little bit too far, you're not going to really have any over travel. As soon as it clicks, as soon as it lets that striker release, you're basically touching the back of the frame. So that's another nice little addition to this trigger. So great trigger pull, guys. Very short, crisp reset, short, crisp trigger pull. Four and a half ish pounds of pull. So hopefully that helps answer that question. The other question has to do with the internals of the gun. So I'm going to go ahead and take it apart real quick here. I'll do another video on how to clean this and going over some of the internals. But for this, I don't want to keep this video too long. So the next question is this. The recoil and guide rod assembly. Is it polymer or is it steel? Okay, well, not to overstate the obvious, but of course the two sets of coils... Are both steel the actual spring material itself and this has basically a dual guide rod and dual spring system here where we're basically we have a one guide rod that moves in conjunction with the other guide rod so I'm gonna put some pressure on this end right here I'm gonna push and we're gonna see that little part that the small part of the guide rod the inner one actually protrude out from the larger one okay so about my initial unboxing, I didn't take it apart, so I had no way of proving this, but it ended up being just like the G2C. So it's basically a combination of steel and polymer, both. So if we look at the end cap here, the nose cap, this is clearly a polymer piece. So we have polymer. Now if we follow this piece all the way down inside of this outer sleeve, this is all the same piece. So this, this cap here is basically the same piece is back here underneath the small spring so when I push in here let me see if I can do this without completely blocking it okay 
we're going to see it's just the, the, the little piece. The narrow part is going to start to protrude out of the larger sleeve. So we're basically polymer from this tip on the inner portion, the smaller guide rod all the way to the back is polymer. Now, when we get to this spot right here, this is the spot that's actually going to interface with your barrel, with the lugs on your barrel, right? This is steel. So it's basically a, a you know solid plastic piece from the end internally all the way up to the opposite end is polymer with a steel cap here now the outer part this you could call this the outer guide rod or simply the guide rod sleeve the part that's underneath the big coils okay that is steel so we're at about 50 percent steel on this about 50 percent polymer so <laughs> there's the there's the answer to the question this is both a polymer and steel guide rod assembly and some people say Taurus said that it was going to be metal. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to say they're lying or not because it is both. So I guess with everyone having a fancy name for everything now, you know how they say this gun has restrike. I guess they should call this a hybrid, right? Because it's half metal and it's half plastic. So hopefully that helped you guys. And the other thing too, you'll notice some paint on here. Mine's got some green on there. Yeah, that's just a way that when they're assembling these in the factory, if the spring's painted, they know the weight of the spring. So if they want a certain weight, they'll grab for green. This this helps, you know, with assembly and keeping parts from getting mixed up. In case they're assembling, you know, 40s on the same line as 9s, for example, or at least on the same final assembly. One might be red, one might be green, you might see yellow. This is something that some manufacturers do, so... Now the next question, some people said, hey man, when you took it apart, did you notice there was already some finish wear on your barrel? And was there any kind of like dirt inside? Well, here's the deal. My, I have not gotten a chance to shoot this gun yet. Hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna be able to shoot it and do those couple tests that I was telling you guys about. But there's a small, small amount of residue in mine. There's just a tiny, tiny bit of brass residue on the feed ramp and a tiny bit of debris in the chamber and barrel. This is perfectly normal, guys, and this is actually a good thing. What it simply means is this gun was test-fired by Taurus. After the final assembly, quality control, one of those steps is to test-fire the pistol. So this gun was test-fired, I have no doubt about it, by Taurus. I'm sure all of them are. And that's good. If something's going to instantly break or fall apart due to some kind of faulty metal urgy or polymer or whatever, we'd rather it happen at Taurus before we get the gun. So... Be happy if you see a teeny bit of grime in here. That just means it was shot. Now, like most manufacturers, they don't take the five seconds to clean it when they're done. That's kind of like whatever. I haven't really ever known a gun company to clean the gun after they test fire it. So there you go. Now, as far as finish wear goes, this is also not surprising, guys. Now, this is a steel barrel, and it has some type of coating on it. I don't know what to exactly call this coating, but I can tell you guys this. It's not nitride. It's not melaniting. It's not tenifer. This is a rather weak coating that's very easy to wear. And I'll show you an example. If you look at the matte finish, right, you can start to see shiny spots near the end of my barrel already. See near the end there, near the muzzle? Same thing if you look on the barrel hood where it interacts with the slide. We're already going to see some shiny spots. That's literally from me just dry racking this gun like a dozen times. I've not even shot it yet. We're just noticing the stock finish, which gives it that matte nickel look, already starting to wear off. So this is also going to be normal, just due to the test firing process, the initial fitment, when the technician's putting the gun together during final assembly. Of course, they're going to cycle the slide X amount of times. And this is where, these are great guns, great guns for the money, but this is where you're going to notice it's a little bit cheaper gun, guys. And I don't think we should fault Taurus for this, but let's be realistic. It's a gun that costs a little over $200. So where I've noticed is these Tauruses kind of lack a little bit is in the finish. They don't have the quality of finish that you're going to get on a Glock or a Smith & Wesson or some of the bigger brands. And I would know, even those wear the finish on the barrels too. But I've, I've noticed particularly with the Tauruses, you know, like with my G2C, started noticing some wear on the finish right away. Even the finish on the outside of the slide is really not that durable so again I'm not giving the gun any minus points for that because of what I paid for the gun and if they put a very costly expensive finish on it 
and had to charge me an extra 40 or 50 dollars more i'd probably say no thanks so hopefully that answers you guys' question if you see some initial wear here taurus does use a cheaper finish on these barrels They've been test fitted and test fired at the factory. And I'm sure all of you, when you get your gun, you've at least a couple times racked it back and forth a little bit, right? So there's a the deal with that. So yeah, basically I was just going over the um, trigger pull and reset. Um, if you notice any finish wear on the inside of your gun, that's all going to be normal. I'm already noticing a little polishing on the rails of this frame. Nothing bad yet. Just starting to notice the finish changing color just a teeny bit ever so slightly right just from racking it a dozen times and yeah it is what it is so i wouldn't worry about it too much this is a hybrid spring steel and plastic that's fine with me too you know steel guide rods are great but look at some other manufacturers such as glock you know the original styers they used all polymer guide rods and these are some of the most tried and true reliable durable duty guns that were ever made so I'm not going to worry about the polymer too much. In fact, sometimes the little bit of flex of having the polymer inner guy rod actually can help in reliability. That's a whole other rabbit hole, but look it up if you're interested. So, yeah. Hopefully that answers a couple more questions for you guys. There's a few more I'm going to address. Just trying to keep these videos around 10 minutes or so. So, one more time, guys. Look at this trigger. Nice pull. very short reset right there no over travel all right guys hopefully that helped out and oh yeah before i go one more question and i shouldn't have to answer this but i have to because you guys are the best and someone actually asked this g23 g3 <laughs> i can't even say it right g3 does it take glock mags glock mag of course it doesn't take Glock mags, guys. Not even close. And we should be happy it doesn't take Glock mags because this has a very ergonomic and thin grip. And if it took one of these plastic sleeved Glock mags, it'd make the grip like about six to eight inches wider. So, no, it doesn't take Glock mags. And I love Glock mags. I love Glock mag compatibility. But I'm very, very happy this gun absolutely does not. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And have a good one.